The way I define crossovers fan fiction is a fan fiction that involves characters, plot, or world building, or etc. from two or more universes or fandoms. And you can see up the Super Who Look and Fallout Equestria are well known enough crossovers. They almost have their own fandom, but most crossovers you won't be able to find so easily. And this is why I love crossovers. You can find them anywhere. Only like three of the images up here are like fan-made crossovers. The rest are from canon sources. Kingdom Hearts and Super Smash Brothers, video game crossovers. The Ninja Turtle Power Rangers one and this Batman Scooby-Doo were actually aired on TV at one point. Yes, they were. And the anime one is from a franchise called, Magical Girl franchise called Pretty Cure, where they combined all the characters from all the series into a giant, a bunch of movies. So basically, maybe if you can even learn to write crossovers well enough, you can like write them for canon sometime in the future if you try. I'll present to you some basic frameworks that are used for crossover fanfics. And they're not the only ways to frame crossovers, but they're the very most common in fanfiction that I've seen. And I'll also go over ways these methods can become like boring, cliched, or hard to read if, they're aren't, if they aren't used properly. First one, this is the most common. The universes literally collide somehow. Typically, either using like portals made with technology or magic, space travel, like if you want to use spaceships like Star Wars, or time travel, which is why Doctor Who is rife with crossovers. And because it's basically one of the simplest ways to cross over worlds, so it's very common. And because it's so common, it can become cliched pretty quickly. It's can often, the story can often just not make sense, especially if you use more than two fandoms or even like more than five and you have a lot of characters you have to keep track of. And sometimes with these fan fictions, they tend to have all the characters, like all the heroes or all the villains get along perfectly. But if that, that takes out some potential conflict in your story to help it move along. And sometimes if you have too many characters and too many fandoms for you to handle as an author, the story can lose focus. And then the next one. I'm amused by the Luna Luna thing as well. They're both named Luna, that's the joke. And basically you have two to, at least two universes, take characters from one and put them in the, in the second universe. You can either have them literally replacing roles like um, with Luna, Princess Luna actually being Sailor Moon, or you can do like this Sailor Senshi of Harmony poster, basically having the characters become superheroes akin to the other universe. However, this one, the main problem with this is that often you take the, you can, it's often rewriting the plot of the second universe with characters from the first universe without variation for character, for like differences between characters. Like, for example, this picture I have here that has a bunch of ponies, it has basically, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Danny Phantom, Cars, American Dragon, Jake Long, all based, and Harry Potter all in the roles of the main six. It was a really interesting idea when I heard about it, but I stopped reading because they were, where I was reading, they were basically reenacting the first two episodes of season one without any difference, and I was just thought, if I want to see the original story, I'll go watch season one, episodes one and two. And then the next version is having both universes, they were showing they were basically in the same universe all along, but the characters are only just barely mating. And there are two subsets to it. Either you can rewrite one of the two universes' canon plots to include both sets of characters, or the story takes place after both canons are resolved, so neither one's storylines are changed before then. And the main problem with this method is that primarily the storylines can become repetitive, especially if you decide to rewrite the plot of the first with the characters from the second, but you don't, and there's not really much in the way of variation. Or even if you come up with a new plot, sometimes that it sometimes just really doesn't fit in either universe. And so it's easy to feel contrived too, especially if you're trying to say that two like Sonic and Ponies up here. They have a lot of similarities, but they could be hard to say that Mobius and Equestria are the same, been the same world the whole time, you know? This is even more the case with like merged sci-fi settings, like 
like if you have two different uh, sci-fi worlds that are different re levels of technology, or just use different or do different kinds of technology, like maybe one is Star Wars style and the other is like biology tech, it won't mesh as well. Or with different fantasy settings with two different magic systems, like trying to put Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series into Equestria. Two different magic systems, not it's a lot harder to pull that off. And this one, it's not it, exactly a story, like a framework for a story in and of itself, but I've seen it enough so I felt like I had to mention it. It's having characters from both worlds fight, whether it's like Goku Superman or like the whole point of the video game Super Smash Bros. The whole point is just see who's stronger and see who beats up the other person more. However, the cliche is that if you, this really can't be a story on its own because if you're just trying to see who's stronger, that's what death battle videos do. Yeah. Screw tech death battle. But it doesn't really work as a story because there's not like a beginning, middle, end of like a plot. You can have this as a scene where two characters battle, but it can't be like the entire story. And just one note about crossover ships before we move on. I had too much fun looking up crossover ships. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, Gear and Violet, I, I think I ship it. Which one? Uh, from Big Hero 6, Keto and Violet. Oh, Violet yeah. Incredibles. <laughs> yep. Actually, not that. I like that. I'll it. I agree. So basically, the only point I can say is just make it believable. It's sometimes opposites attract, and, or sometimes similar people are more likely to work together. Basically, try to learn how romance works in the real world and you can apply that to your ship. Especially since you don't have canon, typically, for a crossover to know how they'll interact, work with each other. So you have to guess based on what you know of the characters. And now here's some, a method on how to effectively plan and write crossovers and stand out from the rest. And my friend, Reed Lover, who initially gave this presentation with me at Anime Bonsai, came up with a handy acronym to remember how to do this. And the other S is missing, but, oh no, never mind, it's my computer. And because it's crossovers, therefore cross, it's first is create a believable excuse, then research, Outline and plan, set and determine limitations, and the last one's supposed to be something different, even though it's not showing on the screen right now. The first is to create a believable excuse. And this one is essentially coming up with the how and why your, your chosen universe has come together into one story. And figuring out which of the frameworks um, work best for your story and figure out which characters you use because you don't have to use every character from your chosen universes to cross over. And with the exception of a few readers that really have a hard time suspending the disbelief, if your readers have a hard time believing that this the setup could happen, they'll start doubting you and they'll stop reading your story. Next, research. Naturally for all writing you have to research, but for crossover specific research, there's a couple different kinds to remember. First, just see what other authors have done, whether for crossing over your fandoms in question, or just crossovers with one of your fandoms involved. And then this, make a list, maybe mentally or on paper, what you like or don't like about, about the crossovers you found, and figure out like cliches and tropes for particular fandoms being crossed over. Like, I mostly write anime fan fiction, and I wrote a Sailor Moon Yu-Gi-Oh crossover a while ago. For some reason, a lot of the other ones I found, they tend to have the characters meet at children's card game tournaments. And I'm like, well, that's boring. If I wanted that, I'll go to Yu-Gi-Oh. So I moved this, the meeting location to be in Egypt and it helped my story be a little more unique. And you'll have to really study and analyze the characters because you're putting them into situations they normally wouldn't encounter in their own native universes. But if you know them well enough, like emotionally, and at a mental level, then you'll be able to write them a little more realistically in a new setting. And fandom wikis are your friend. Like the MLP wikia is very loaded full of uh, basically character sheets and, and episode summaries, um, information about important story items, so on and so forth, that can really help you uh, flush out your crossover and help make it fit, uh, make it fit with canons, even whether or not you're rewriting canon. 
Next is outline and plan. And then basically you need to figure out approximately how long you want it to be. Like, for example, maybe you want to just write a short story for it, but maybe you just figure out while you're planning that it's taking up pages and pages and it's trying to be like 50,000 words or something. You might either need to take out plot points or just rewrite the story to fit multi-chapters. Because it's off-putting to people when they see a short story that they think is like too long and it's like, why is this on all on one page? And also, especially for crossovers, try to avoid pieces that are mostly dialogue. Because it can get dra boring when dragged out too long. The planning stage can help you figure out like emotions, settings, reactions, to be able to make your story more plausible, basically. With fanfiction, you know that you can basically get away with not describing certain things, because you assume the reader knows them, right? Basically. But with crossovers, it might be better to just go more the route of original fiction, describe settings and actions a bit more. Because you never know if someone will come across a crossover because they like one fandom, but only like know a little bit about another. It happens quite a bit. Outlines are helpful for any story you write, but especially with crossovers so you can keep your characters and settings straight and not letting the story lose focus. Next is setting and determining limitations. It's more than just figuring out what kind of things you won't write in a story ever. It's, you'll need to keep continuity from both fandoms in mind and somehow bring up in your story where your story takes place in relation to continuities. Like some crossovers tend to have it at the end of both storylines just to make it easier on themselves. Or one of mine takes place in the middle of season three of one story and like at the end of season four of another fandom and my readers need to know that. And it needs to be mentioned in the story somehow. Basically with that, I tend to put information about where this fits in the timelines and author notes, but it's better to use dialogue clues and setting clues to make it more clear to your reader. The last thing is something different. And then the question to ask is, what can you do with your crossover that hasn't been done before? Or at least, if, like say you're writing for Fallout Equestria, and there's a lot of that out there. You can at least see what's rarely been done. And figuring this out will help you figure out a hook to get readers interested in your story, especially when writing a, like a summary to put on fan fiction. And just another note, some people do use OCs to help their crossovers mesh more. And Sometimes OCs can act as a catalyst for the plot or just a way to bring the worlds together. I have Sora up here because I think he's a great example of this. So that the, the, the player in the game can experience both the Final Fantasy and Disney sides of the game from like a neutral party in a way. Or like this other picture I have here, it's from a Yu-Gi-Oh! Danny Phantom crossover I ran into. She connected the world by having an OC that connected the Pharaoh with Danny Phantom himself. And from what I saw of it, it worked pretty good, even though the story's only in progress. And if you do decide to use an OC to help link the worlds, ask if it'll truly be beneficial for the story, or if it'd be better just to leave them out the OC and find another way. And like with all writing, you want to flesh out your plot and practice good writing. So, because there isn't really, I think one universal thing that deters people from fanfiction is really bad writing and a plot that is confusing or plot hole riddled. With the frameworks I showed earlier in, the, in my presentation, try to figure out the one that works best for your story, not just the one you think would be cool. Although, admittedly, both is better, but focus on what would work first. And who's, who here likes to spend hours on TV tropes? Woo! That's definitely me. If by hours you mean literal days and months. <laughs> You know, yeah, I've done that too. Uh, yeah, he has no idea. He's yeah. actually been that well, time. so long as you don't get caught in your trap of doing this while yeah. researching fanfiction, TV tropes is your friend. Basic, um, for for your chosen genre, like say you're writing a crossover adventure story, and for the specific crossover, figure out which tropes are most common and which ones you want to use properly or play with, invert or completely avoid, etc. And obviously, you know how large the site is. You don't have to do this with every trope, just the ones that are most common in your genre of story and your kind of crossover. And here's one final, I actually, this is a really interesting point to bring up because sometimes crossovers can help people 
like MLP crossovers can help people find new series to enjoy and to enjoy. For example, if there's an old 80s sci-fi western cartoon called Brave Star I heard about, and it actually has a horse character in it. So if I wanted to cross over that Brave Star with MLP, I would want to give more descriptions to the settings and characters and plot points from the from the Brave Star because it's more obscure and that the story can be better overall enjoyed regardless of whether you know both the well-known fandom and the obscure one. It's actually what I'm doing with the crossover I'm working on at the moment. It's crossing over Motor City with a cartoon called Motor City with a game called Splatoon. I don't know if you've heard of Motor City, but it basically, it's a dystopian future. Was it a Disney Channel? It was on Disney XD. Oh, that one, okay. Yep. So, does anyone have any questions about crossover and shenanigans? Do you have internet connection on that? Do you want to show us your, like, uh, stories? Well, well, my one... <laughs> Oh my gosh. The world has never seen my crossovers. No, my crossover, I've actually been working on it for 10 years because I took several year hiatus. It's for Sailor Moon and Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's really the only crossover I have up. My fanfiction.net username is Mew Universe, like the Pokemon Mew and the universe. So you guys can look up my stuff on there if you want. Because I'm basically wrapping up this crossover before I start sequels to the to the crossover and start and posting my Motor City Splatoon crossover too. <laughs> yeah. Can you favorite uh, Mount Pony uh, crossover fan fiction on fan fiction? Any recommendations? Hold on. Uh, hold on. I have these are all the these I actually just gonna oh, show them the oh, end. Oh, okay. The only one I've read right now is Better Living Through Science and Ponies by okay. Penstroke. Oh. I love it. In fact, I showed my husband to it, and he doesn't really get fan fiction, but after reading that, he's like, wow, I understand why people like fan fiction. So I'm like, yes, success. <laughs> it's like any other thing. There's yep. good stuff and not there's good, good stuff. stuff. There's bad stuff. Yep. And so these are ones that I've read, and I think they're really good if you're into <laughs> any of these. They're all on fanfiction.net except for the Better Living one. So... And Five Nights at Scooby's is in progress. I don't like Five Nights at Freddy's, but this story's good. Seriously. <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's actually uh, it's, uh, very hard to tell, especially if you're not much for the horror or jump scares. Mm -hmm. But just if you read through the wiki and and ignore the random things that float past you, that's their gimmick. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of well-defined, mm -hmm. highly plausible. Actually, they they linked some things to real life events. They, there is a wonderful, fully fleshed out, uh, huge lore behind that. There is, and Crazy. that's the great thing about fan fiction, whether you're crossing over or not. Like, mm -hmm. I think what I like about the Five Nights at Scooby's one is that it's it's basically the mystery gang trying to figure out what's behind the animatronics, and so Shaggy uh, accidentally gets roped into being the night guard, and so that way they're able to get in and investigate a little more. <laughs> There's a reason I read this fan fiction during the day. It's, Still terrifying. They're a really good author too. Oh yes, good horror fanfic is the kind you read in bright day, you know, in in the middle of a field. Yeah, basically. <laughs> do, you have, do you have any questions about the stuff I talked about about crossovers? Maybe ask me more about my writing. Yeah. Uh, I've I've heard of like like four different ways to write. There's like seat the pants. You just kind of write as you are, uh -huh. there's flashlighting where it's just like, I know what's up ahead about two or three chapters, and there's like full on outlining where like, okay, here's the beginning of the story, here's the end, here's everything that's gonna happen in the middle, let's write this thing. What, what kind of writer are you? I am very much, I discovered recently I'm a very intensive outliner. Oh. I have to basically outline most of my story, if not all of it, before, otherwise I will never get finished. That's why my one crossover has taken so long because I didn't outline it at first. And now I'm like, great, plot holes, I have to rewrite. But actually, no, darn it, I don't have them on this jump drive, but I could show, I could show you maybe on my computer later, I, the way I outline. I basically just do bullet points in complete sentences so I can rearrange them if needed. I've heard of some people that use index cards to outline, like write down a plot point and stick them on a wall or on a table and they can rearrange them as they want. Yeah. Did someone have a question back there? I did. Um, yeah? What is your main, like, what drives you to write? 
At first, it was, I was mostly writing self-insert fanfics. I really was attached at the time to Sailor Moon. It's still basically the first, my first love, second only, sorry, but MLP second. But <laughs> I, okay. like, the Sailor Moon, they were like the best friends I, I w really wanted but never had. So I would write myself in so I could like be with them in a sense. And I did that with Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, but then I started branching out from that when I, um, like I delved into Legend of Zelda and writing more about other characters. In the end, it's mostly the characters that I like to write for. Speaking of which, I have a, a scene with Pinky and Rarity I need to upload after the con. But anyways, any other questions? Yeah? Um, how do you... So when you're writing a story, it, you reach one certain point where you just, I, I guess, that when when you when you get burnout from a story, like you've been working on it for so long, and you reach a certain point, you're like, oh, I'm so done with this. How do you get through that? I'm, I'm yeah, kind of I tend to just start outlining for a different story. Honestly, like I was stuck for so long on my Sailor Moon Yu-Gi-Oh crossover. At first, it was because I had to write a, a children's card game duel scene, and those are wicked hard to write. But then after I got that, I just just hit a lull, so I was focusing on other fanfics instead. That's what I do. Draw my attention elsewhere and then come back to it later, because... Yeah? Yeah, I just wanted to add, like, that's the Brandon Sanderson rule of writing. Just If you don't feel like writing something, just write something else. And and then just keep writing That's actually things. how the Alcatraz series came to be. Yeah. <laughs> because he was writing all these epic fantasies and sometimes he's like, I just want to do something silly. So Alcatraz came to be. <laughs> <laughs> Imploding teddy bears. <laughs> I need to finish reading that series. Have they put out any more books? I know he got the rights back. Um, Enter. Enter? Okay. So, what was that? Oh, did... did I know he got the rights back, and that's why he I don't tend to keep track of what authors do, so I'm not sure on that point. Okay. That's, I, I wasn't sure if any more of those had come out without the trash. I don't know either. Okay. But yeah. Does anyone else have crossovers that they've read recently that they enjoyed? Did okay. Recommend? Yeah? Sorry, I have to recommend uh, My Little Pony Morphing is Magic. <laughs> have you ever read yes. Animorphs? Oh, yes. Boy. It's a beautiful yeah. crossover. I don't know how that guy juggled 12 main characters, but he did it, and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. so if you want an example of how to juggle a bunch of characters and still make an amazing story. I, I mean, another one really good one is uh, My Little Caboose, Blue is Magic. Not the second one, because he darkly quit on that, but he still did uh, My Little Caboose, and he had people from Blood Gulch, Red vs. Blue, with My Little Pony, and it just <laughs> It did really, really well. That's great. So yeah, uh, yeah. It's magic as well. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, one thing that uh, I'd actually like to add, this, isn't, this is a bit less of a crossover specific thing, but one thing that I've very much learned through writing is that if you don't have a good editor, someone who takes a look and says, this makes no sense whatsoever, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, literally the one chapter that I ended up coming out with before I decided that I just couldn't do it, um, really uh, underwent, I think, five or six major revisions uh, because I would describe something weirdly and so it sounds like injuries are in weird spots and nothing makes sense and uh, just having a good, uh, good editor, especially if you're doing crossover, who's familiar with one, or preferably both, fandoms will help a lot. Agreed. And if you can't find someone like specifically edit, at least having a second pair of eyes to look over. Like, mm -hmm. I'll admit, my husband is the one that typically, like, that reads over my fanfiction and tells me what he thinks. And he'll tell me if something's confusing. But yeah. Uh, at least having a friend look over it, even if you can't find an official beta reader. I know on fanfiction.net they have a way to find beta readers. I don't know if FIM fiction does because I haven't used the site all that much. They have a lot of features. They have a okay. lot of features. That's it's good. Beautiful. Yeah, I could just prefer fanfiction.net at the you, moment. You don't know the glory that is fanfiction.net yet. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh, which hopefully happens really? soon. Oh. Hmm. I just hope they, you know, are able to keep away from like the and you you remember the train wreckers? I, they were this they were they were downvote fairies. They would show up 
trolled the heck out of comments, downvoted everything to oblivion until the mods wised up and permabed all. That's oh. crazy. It was it was sad. Yeah. Actually, on a random note, who here has seen Inside Out already? It's awesome. It's so good. So basically. I put up the, I like the Inside Out Kingdom Hearts one, because it takes one of the characters oh, okay. from Kingdom Hearts and it has the emotions inside his head as he becomes, as he becomes a nobody. So, oh, wow. shit, this has the, it shows the emotions panicking, because it's like, we can't make him feel anything! And in his head, in this person's head, sadness was the one in charge and joy was the one shoved to the corner, so it was a really interesting dynamic to see for a one-shot crossover. I mean, there's a lot of crossover abilities with it inside out. Now. I know, you can basically do the emotions in any character's head. <laughs> you saw it like in, in the movie. You what? Had, you exactly. saw it in the movie. You had, had a whole bunch of people with yeah. their Actually, emotions. after Inside Out, I'll never look at character emotions the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Any other questions? Any other fanfics to recommend? Yeah? At what point would you drop, like, the two, merge the two together? So, I mean, like, say you're in one, like, side A, and it's just like, do 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 going along, and then all of a sudden, like, you crash in side B, how do you merge the two? You know, you it depends on the story at hand, because, like, with the first, with the method of universes colliding, you typically have that near the beginning of the story, and you just end up in, stay in one of the two universes the whole time. With, um, with some of the other methods, like, if they were in the same universe the whole time, you have to decide just which setting to go with. Like, like say, crossing over, I don't know. Like, maybe like Fairly Odd Parents of Danny Phantom. They're both in set in similar style cities. The question is, would you want to have it set in the city where Danny lives or the city where Timmy lives? Or are they in the same city the whole time? I don't, it, that one is basically, you have, probably should say, you can, or you can even travel to them freely. And what was the other one? And putting characters from one universe in the other universe, you're going to pretty much stay in the other universe the whole time, beginning to end. That's, yeah. It really depends on the framework you start with. Yeah? So I don't know if you've read, have you read Fallen um, Equestrian? Um, I read one story, I read like a couple chapters of one story in the Fallout Equestrian universe. It looked interesting, but because I not aware of how fall art works, I just didn't continue with it. I was gonna ask maybe what you'd recommend. I don't I don't know Fallout Animals. Yeah, I don't either. Anyone else read Fallout Equestria? I listened to it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe one of you guys could recommend a Fallout Equestria fic for well, recommend I only the Fallout Equestria. Fallout Equestria. Yeah, yeah. The probably one, I don't know. That's the one that I listened to the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. The, the interesting thing the is part. that um, oh. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the interesting thing with Fallout Equestria is especially especially if you happen to know bits and pieces of Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas lore, what you actually end up noticing is that uh, kind of the cliche that that you mentioned, where you basically rewrite the story but with Universe B's characters. Yeah. That's kind of what Fallout Equestria ends up doing, except it works because they remix things, they rename things, they they establish a proper identity. They actually account for variation of the mm -hmm. other universe. Yeah. Which is good. So it's like very Where's the artist panel? Where's the artist panel? Next panel. Throw them over. Yeah. Sorry, keep going. Um, and I, I just I just find that rather interesting that uh, just because it's generally a bad idea, it doesn't mean that it's impossible to do correctly. Mm -hmm. I, I just found it absolutely amazing that Kat was able to literally take basically the entirety of Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, uh, vary it slight, well, n some cases majorly, but most plot points that happen uh, in Fallout Equestria can be mapped pretty much directly to Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas. Interesting. And yeah, so that, so that's, you, it's sort of like, from what I read also, Fallout Equestria, like the spin-offs, one uh, story of it, it's like they used the putting Universe A, which is MLP, into Fallout Equestria, mm -hmm. where basically they, but they bring in new characters to basically be like uh, survi uh, survivors, sounds like. So it's, it's definitely sounded interesting, and it, I'm glad it pulls it off so well. That's why even people like me who don't know Fallout still hear of it. Yeah, it's... I, I wasn't familiar with Fallout at all, and 
it just works pretty well as a fun yeah. post apocalyptic just, kind it, of thing. It basically uses all OCs, right? Mostly. It, um, it references, it references the, main the main six from 200 years ago. Okay. Um, so it like repre find out how, how everything went how down. Everything went down. It, they mentioned Celestia and Luna kind of in passing. Um, they, I don't, do they actually? No, they say, they say their names directly. Yeah. Um, there's actually a few very important plot points uh, yeah. involving like uh, a set of drugs that Pinkie Pie invented that makes you suave and intelligent, but are highly addictive. Um, there's this whole arc revolving around the addiction. There's several romance subplots. You need to know. You don't need to know anything about Fallout, any of it. And if you know, you don't even technically need to know anything about the MLP fandom apart from their horses. Uh, everything actually kind of gets explained in a very natural feeling way. Even if you're a master of both fandoms, you don't look at this and say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I know this." They. I, I probably sound like some ridiculous fanboy, but um, <laughs> honestly, this is, I, I really, I really like it. Probably the biggest reason that it's hard to read is because it is, well, it is the tome of fanfics. Yeah. It's long, pacing can sometimes be a little off because they try, they're trying to adhere to the pacing of Fallout 3, yeah. uh, which can be a little iffy at times, but if you stick through it, it's I genuinely will say it is a it is a worthwhile fanfic to read. And you know, in general, I like I advise people if they are crossing over two series, they can it's it's better maybe to like like if you're crossing over obscure with well known to to really describe and play out more one than the other. It's better to try to do both like you would original fiction, like what sounds like Fallout Equestria does. But I recommend at least doing that with one side. If, because maybe you could better focus that way. But whichever method works. Sorry about that. Oh wow, 10 minutes left. Anything else left to add questions about or add? No, it's basically it. Yeah? How do you get people to read your stuff? <laughs> <laughs> write really well, write a good summary. You have, I, you have no many yeah. times people write, I suck at summaries, I'm sorry, after writing a little snip. They're like, I don't want to read your story now. If you say you suck at summaries, how do I know your writing's any good? You have to, basically I think the, it's just, and also writing, admittedly you get more people to read your stuff if you write more consistently and there's more of your stuff for people to find. Mm -hmm. Beyond all that though, it's basically luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah? So, you know, the... I don't remember what it, where I where I heard this, but someone was making a joke or something. So normally, someone says you don't judge a book by the cover, mm -hmm. but someone says no, actually, you generally do judge a book by its cover, especially if you count what it, the words in the back. If you open up the back of the cover, yeah, mm. yeah, that's very true. So and I think that's maybe why fanfiction.net and fanfiction are both pretty good about letting you add a cover art too, because that can draw mm -hmm. readers yeah. to get good art. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was actually what I was about to mention. Um, it's a kind of a cheaty little trick, but uh, if you, uh, in pretty much every case, you've probably seen the front page if you actually end up scrolling down, uh, that, pay, that stories without cover art take up, you know, the two, three lines of text for the, a snippet of their summary and their title. But if you give that fanfic a cover art, it makes it like twice as big, yeah. plus you have color to draw readers in. I'm not sure if fanfic is similar to that. Well, I think, well, with fanfiction.net, there's always some picture there, whether it's the username picture uh, or the art. With fanfiction, though, I can see that being the case. Mm -hmm. And also, but the thing about writing summaries, while you're writing a story, something I learned from taking Brandon Sanderson's writing class and a couple other classes, that's good to be able to summarize your sentence in your story in like a paragraph and in a couple sentences. That with fan fiction, this is a helpful method because then you can put your couple sentence summary of your story, uh, synopsis technically, and stick it on the site, and it's well written so people will want to read it. Anyone in, I don't know, I can't. Maybe anyone in the back that have any questions? Yeah. So, uh, ha being having been on fan, uh, fan fiction and on fan fiction. Like which would you say has the better interface? Mm. I, I think the interface is easier to understand with fanfiction, but I've been using fanfiction.net since I was 13. I'm 23 now, so I have a longer time to get used to it. 
Fan fiction, I've only started really using it a couple years ago, so. And they keep And, it. yeah, so I think fanfiction.net's easier to use in general. Plus, if you get sick of ponies, you could have a lot of other fandoms to move to. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? No. Okay, just making sure. Yeah? So you say you've been working with fanfiction on and off for 10 years, right? Yeah. Um, do you have any other, like, original content that you're hoping to release? Well, I did for a while, but I had some mostly fantasy-based works I was working on, uh, a pre-dystopian sci-fi I was working on. I don't know. I have to take. There was a writing class that kind of discouraged me from that because it felt like no one cared. So I, I couldn't even write for like a whole year or so. So, but fan fiction was easier to transition back to after that kind of discouragement. So maybe I'll go back to my original work someday. But I don't know. It kind of bothers me when I, people saying a magic pencil sounds juvenile when I'm writing it in a teen, uh, teen-oriented story, but whatever. <laughs> yeah? Um, I'm asking a lot of questions, but yeah. might as well. Um, yeah. I know that on FinFic, uh, they actually have, uh, it's, not, it's not as big a link as it used to be, mm -hmm. but there is a very clear uh, section on writing guides. Um, uh, they they go over a little bit of basic writing as well as probably some probably some pony centric stuff. I have yet to read it. Yeah. I'm lazy. Um, I was wondering if fanfic.net happened to have a similar thing, which would be helpful because that covers well fanfic is fanfic as opposed to fimfic. Yeah, I'm afraid fanfiction doesn't have anything like that. It mostly is limited to having like post. Um, they have like uh, fanfictions and crossovers in separate categories and as well as like communities and groups to join so it does however viking is it zx, ZX? viking zx here actually does a really good blog series about building better writing he posts it on fan fiction and on his personal blog i'd recommend looking at that for good writing tips because he's actually been able to get published so he knows mm -hmm. a lot more than i do is there a word limitation or, or different standards for fanfiction.net uh, like there is for fanfiction well I think the word standards are basically the same. A thousand the, words are not words. Well, except some people do post like gravels, which could be like around 100 to 500 words. They don't allow poems on fan fiction, but they allow pretty much any length of story. Like the longest work of literature ever is on fanfiction.net. It's a Super Smash Bros. fanfic that's still around 200 chapters and still going. That, so I could say that's the longest crossover ever, because Super Smash Bros. is a crossover. Yeah, by definition. Crap. <laughs> And you thought Follow the Quest Street was long. And it, it's not even done yet. I think it's going to be... Uh, it's already on 4 million words. Yeah, and I heard that he might have another 100 or more chapters to go. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And the guy that wrote is writing it actually isn't a native English speaker, so he started the fan fiction to learn to write English. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it it's working! <laughs> uh, just as a reference, uh, you... Off the, you said the phrase four million words. Mm -hmm. It's more than some classic literature like um, Count of Monte Cristo and whatever. Yeah, just as just as a kind of reference, this is a you know, e you know English essay t font with tiny margins. This is a quarter of a million. So take this book, multiply it by four, Eight. then multiply it by four again. So multiply it by sixteen. This book sixteen times thicker. It's and you print have. Out, yeah, but that's. It's, not it's like trying to print out Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, that I didn't know. That's actually yeah, not it too. It's it's uh, the second printing uh, printed books one through three uh, in one book, and then four and five in the other one, and it's it's not actually not too bad. Yeah. It's got a nice. It's got a really nice dust cover too. Yeah. Smash Bros. one is still longer, but it still sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Four minutes, come on. And yep. Oh, um, actually, probably as some useful tip for people who are lazy, and especially since you're um, uh, taping this, uh, if we happen to have, since I, from what I understand, you have internet, if you wrote down just on the screen somewhere or visited uh, Viking ZX's site, specifically his yeah. blog series about uh, better writing, oh, you could have right clicked Chrome and then uh, open a new private tab anyway. Uh, control shift N will open incognito mode. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's taking a while, but yeah, Viking ZX, 
There's also, oh, Stephen geez. King has also written a book about writing. Ooh. I would recommend looking that up because it's Stephen King. And mm -hmm. so he's a really great writer. And there's a book I have called um, Nailing Your Novel that I got as a on my Kindle, which I actually, that's where I got a lot of my ideas for how to outline. So you could look that up. Oh, the other he is on film fiction. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where his... I think uh, on film fiction will link to it. Yeah. yeah. Probably links. So basically... Look at all those blogs. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, he, he I like... Because he also po uh, posts his blogs over here. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, like, it's called being a better writer. And... I actually like the way he t handled talking about romance, so that's like my favorite of his. Uh -huh. He also talks about foils, creating a good stinger. He has, he's like uber skilled, so I totally recommend it. I think his website, normal website, is on WordPress, so you'd have to well, maybe on, put that in. If it's on WordPress, the advantage being is that uh, he probably has his Being a Better Writer series tagged, and one of the features of WordPress is uh, there's actually there's actually a link that'll pull up his, his blog and specifically his posts that are tagged being a better writer. Yep. So. Um, First shows is fan fiction. I don't know. I have his URL saved on my own computer. I just. Oh, here it is. Dig it. Sorry. Yeah. Touch screen. Touch thing not working. Maxviking.wordpress.com. Uh, I actually got to meet him when. Because he lived in my, because I lived in the, uh, the, we lived in the same ward for a while, so. And his book One Drink is pretty good, mm -hmm. but I'm just not too much into mysteries, so I, there are others that like it more than me. And, yep. And that's basically it. Thank you all for being here. Ooh. I hope you learned something. <laughs>